Hi, my name is Frederick Chipkin. Now, when you open up Adobe Photoshop for the first time, it can be a bit overwhelming. That's because Photoshop is used for photography, design work, medical imaging, fine art work, basically anything visual that's done in the world today is done in Adobe Photoshop. Well, I'm going to teach you how to par down Adobe Photoshop's interface so that's neat, organized, and you'll be seeing just the tools which you'll be using for designing textiles every day. Now, when you open up Adobe Photoshop Creative Cloud for the first time, you'll be greeted by this start screen. If you'd rather not see the screen, which is my personal preference, here's how to get rid of it. Just go to Edit, Preferences, General, and uncheck Show Start Workspace when no documents are open. On a Mac, you do the exact same thing, except you first go to Photoshop and then Preferences. Now next time you open up Photoshop, instead of seeing this workspace, you'll be seeing Photoshop's standard workspace. To get to that workspace now, just click on Window, then Workspace, then over to Essentials. Now by default, Photoshop CC has a dark interface. Now this is great for photography, where a black or very dark background can make the colors really pop. However, when working with textile designs, I feel it's better to work with a light gray or neutral interface. When working with a light gray or neutral interface, it's easier to see how the colors in your textile designs weigh in with each other. So follow along with me, we're going to lighten things up a bit. So let's go to Edit, Preferences, Interface. And let's click on the square on the far right. Ah, that's much better. Then click on OK to close the dialog box. Now you should have a much easier time judging how the colors play against each other when you're designing. And I dare say, it's a lot more cheerful to look at. Now we're going to be cleaning up the desktop a bit, so it just shows the many panels we'll be using on a daily basis when designing textiles. So let's click here and drag the Layers panel out. Then click here on the very top of this group of panels and let's drag the whole group out. And then click on the tiny X to close them. Now let's drag this back. And adjust the size. Now let's go to Window. and then go down to History, then click here and drag the History panel out, then click on the X to close the group of panels, and then drag the History panel back. Now our desktop is looking a lot more simplified, which should make it a lot easier to work with. Okay, now we're going to adjust the preferences just a little bit more. So let's go to Edit, then down to Preferences, then up to General, then uncheck Always Create Smart Objects When Placing. Now if you look over here, you'll see By Cubic Automatic. I want you to change that to Nearest Neighbor Preserve Hard Edges. Then go to Workspace and uncheck Open Documents as Tabs. We're doing this so we can have several windows open at the same time. The setting is good when you're working on coordinates or when you're swapping motifs from one window to the next, which is done quite often in textile design. Now let's uncheck Enable Floating Document Window Docking, which is a real mouthful and then click on Tools, uncheck Animated Zoom, it's a memory waster, then uncheck Enable Flick Panning, 
and if you have a scroll wheel on your mouse, put a check next to Zoom with Scroll Wheel. And then click OK. Now we're going to change the shape of the toolbar so that it's more compact and maybe just a tad easier to find the various tool functions. To do this, all we have to do is click on the tiny double arrows on top of the toolbar. Now Photoshop CC's toolbar allows you to customize it, which means you can move the tools around the toolbar just the way you like them. This is a great thing to have because I prefer to have my toolbar look like this. So let's get started. Let's click on Edit and go down to Toolbar. Now the first thing I want you to do is get rid of the Edit Toolbar dots because I find them not really necessary to have on the toolbar. Clicking here takes them off the toolbar. These useful guys here, well, we'll leave these useful guys alone. Now we're going to move some tools around on the toolbar. And in particular, we're going to have the Rectangular Marquee Tool and the Move Tool switch positions. Doing this is very simple. Just click here on top of this group of tools and carefully drag them over here. So this group of tools is now on top of all the group of tools. Now, if you look at the toolbar, you'll see that the Rectangular Marquee Tool and the Move Tool have switch positions. Now let's have some fun. What would happen if you messed up all the tools in the toolbar like this? What to do, what to do. Well, what to do is not worry, because all you have to do is click on Restore Defaults, found over here, and your toolbar will revert back to its original settings. Now let's deselect this, move this group up, and we're good to go. Let's flip over here and I'll show you something else. Once you've arranged your toolbar exactly the way you want it, it's a good idea to save your settings. To do this, just click on the words Save Presets found over here. And then in the next window that pops up, give your customized toolbar a name such as Frederick. Then click Save. Now, if for any reason the tools on your toolbar get messed up or out of order, just click on Load Presets and you'll find that your saved toolbar is right there waiting for you. Let's click Done to close the dialog box. Now, in Adobe's quest to complicate the tools we use every day, it came up with this new document interface panel. We simply don't need to see all these options when creating a window to work in. In fact, all we need to see is the color mode, the resolution, and the width and the height of the new document we're creating. So I found what works great for everyday use is the legacy new document interface. So let's set our defaults to that and our lives will be much easier. Okay, so let's go to Edit, then down to Preferences, then up to General, and then put a check mark next to Use Legacy New Document Interface. Then click OK. Now next time you want to create a window to work in, just go to File, then New, and then a much simpler dialog box will open up. Simplicity can be a beautiful thing. Now we're going to tweak the tool settings a tiny bit more. All we're doing here is making sure that anti-alize or anti-alias found here is not checked on any of the selection or fill tools. When anti-alias is checked, it makes the edges blurred, which is great for photography where you want the edges to blend. However, in textile design in general, at least in the beginning, you want nice, sharp, not blurred edges. So let's click here and go over to the elliptical marquee tool and uncheck anti-alias. Nothing to check or uncheck with a single row marquee tool. 
nothing to check or uncheck with the single column marquee tool. The reason for this is that both the single row and the single column marquee tools can't have anti lies edges. Now let's go back to the rectangular marquee tool, which also, by the way, can't have anti lies edges. Okay, now let's go to the lasso tool and uncheck anti alias, and then we'll uncheck anti alias for the rest of the selection tools. And when you're finished unchecking anti alias for all the selection tools, select the lasso tool again because the lasso tool is the selection tool that's generally used most often. Now let's drag over to the magic wand tool and uncheck anti lies there too. And click here to get to the bucket tool. Now the bucket tool is a little bit different. On top of the screen, you'll see that anti alias is grayed out which usually means that we can't change that setting. However, we can change this setting, and here's how to do it. Just go to File, New, and then enter these settings on the new Winner dialog box, just so you have the same thing on your screen as I have on my screen, and then click OK. Now, if you look at anti-alias, you'll see that it's no longer grayed out, which means you can now uncheck the box next to it. Okay, so we have just a few more tweaks and we'll be finished organizing the desktop and we'll be ready to design textiles. Now, one thing that's a given that all textile designers need to see on the screen are rulers. We need to see a horizontal and a vertical ruler so we know the true scale of the image on our screen. To turn the rulers on, just go to View and then go down to Rulers. Now you'll know at a glance the scale of the design that you're working on. Okay, the final step. We've arranged our workspace just the way we like it. It's time to save it. To do this, just go to Window, then Workspace, then New Workspace. Let's give our workspace a name. Then put a check mark next to Keyboard Shortcuts, Menus, and Toolbar. And then click Save. Now if I was to mess up our workspace a little bit by doing something like this. All I'd have to do is go to Window, Workspace, and then go over to the workspace I saved to get my customized workspace back. Now that we've gotten Adobe Photoshop's interface pared down, neat, and organized, please join me back for my other classes where I'm going to teach you every aspect of designing textiles using this wonderful tool called Adobe Photoshop. Mm -hmm.